An early speed advantage, I think, can really snowball the game out of control, right? Rajon has a lot of different leads that you can go with. For example, you could go with Whimsicott plus that Maridon. You could go with Frigraph plus Maridon as well. So one of the questions for Rajon is, do you want to commit to Tailwind or do you want to commit to Trick Room, actually? That's right. I mean, Ursaluna, Blood Moon, and Trick Room is so scary for Andrew's team, but, but can he get there? And Cinderor and Maridon are the leads from Rajon against Terrapagos and Fluttermane on the other side from Andrew. So right now, I think the Terrapico slot is in a kind of spooky position, right? Because it's Choice Specs, and so Fake Out can easily get launched in that spot. A um, Maridon can start just dishing out massive amounts of damage. The idea behind this lead is ideally to just go for, like, Icy Wind and then start going for Terra Star Storm, for example. Uh, you do have to worry about Fluttermane obviously being able to deal super effective damage with that Moonblast, but this is a little bit speedier of a Fluttermane, not exactly the most offensive variant. Absolutely. I mean, it's interesting because normally we've seen a lot of players be just really willing to hold their, ter their Terraspalization because they don't want to get knocked out because it was... Terra Star Storm, but here it's actually a little bit different because Miraidon, it's not so tank. Like it, it'll probably take some chip damage at some point, and so maybe you don't really mind just like I don't know, like becoming weak to Terra Star Storm. Uh, you could probably afford it a little bit more here. So um, there's a lot going on here. Miraidon's threatening a KO with Terra Electric Volt Switch. You can also use that to get out of Fluttermane, but it can take some damage in, ex uh, in return. Terrapagos can Terrasalize to overwrite the terrain. The turn is starting here. We do see a Terrasalization right out of the gate. Which Pokemon is Terrastalizing? It, it is going to be the Miraidon to start. That's right, Miraidon going to Terra Electric. I like this decision a lot. You you not only increase your damage output, but you also turn off turn off your fairy weakness with Miraidon. I think Miraidon's probably gotta be the star of the show here. Totally. And on the other end, here we see a terrestrialization right away on turn one before any Pokemon is even attacked. Here is Terrapico's terrestrializing, turning off the Terra Shell, saying, you know what, I don't really think I need to take not very effective. I'll probably take a fake out this turn anyway. And importantly, removing the electric terrain. One of the only abilities, maybe the only ability in the game that can actually remove the terrain. So uh, Miraidon just lost a huge chunk of its damage output. Here we go. It's going to be Fake Out. That's really safe into the Terrapico slot. Moonblast Ooh. is going to come out, but because of that Terra, Miraidon will survive. Critically, actually doing less than half, and so could have survived anyway, but Volt Switch now, of course, will do increased oh. damage here. Actually targets the Terrapicos, and that's a lot of damage <laughs> on what is the star Aaron, on where, Andrew's team. Where did Terrapicos' help go? Aaron, it was there a second ago. Where is it now? Well, that might look pretty bad. Okay, it is pretty bad. Oh, an interesting Whimsicott switch in here. Um, the thing about this is that, like, Terrapicos can still probably get an attack off because it's, it's, you know, still got a decent chunk of health left. The problem is that, uh, like, Incineroar with the Assault Fest is actually a really good matchup against this Terrapicos, just taking meaningfully less damage. So, Whimsicott can set Tailwind, but the Icy Wind from Fluttermane could make things a little bit difficult. Like, it's also unclear if Incineroar will pick up a KO from here. I feel like it probably won't, but... It's Incineroar, so you never really know, so... I was gonna say, if it was, like, really invested in attack, like, yeah. Flareblitz actually gets that knockout, and you just remove the Terrapicos immediately... It's so Assault so it could be, right? Yeah, yeah. let's see. I mean, Terrapico's taking that much damage and not getting anything off in return doesn't feel great, but Whimscott's going to Ooh. offer the Protect here, so this, of course, will conserve its Focus Ash. We're just going to see another Terra Star Storm not come out, but like you mentioned, Wolf, it's Assault Vest on the Incineroar, so I really don't expect it to do that much damage. Yeah, we saw a non-Terra Star Storm, Terra Star Storm uh, KO and Incineroar earlier. When I think this will do meaningfully less. Let's see, does this Choice Specs boost it? How much is it going to do? Oh my god, no, that's really it's not, not very a much. KO, and you turn coming out, I love this from Aaron. Aaron basically saying, you know what, Incineroar, I don't, or sorry, not Aaron, Rajon, I got confused with all the Miraidon we've been seeing. Rajon saying, you know what, yeah, Incineroar, I don't think I can get the KO, so I'm actually going to use Incineroar to switch in another Pokemon safely. Miraidon hits the field once again. The Tornadus does not have Protect. It also does not have the Focus Sash, so uh, Rajon just has so much offensive pressure here. Do you ever just Tailwind and Discharge? discharge? Yeah, I do, baby! <laughs> let's go, Miraidon. Let's, let's see a magic trick. I would love to see some Pokemon disappear here, because there's no way around that. Yeah, you can also go for Tailwind and Volts, which is yep. pretty safe, but it feels like removing the opponent's speed control in a single, in a single attack just feels so valuable. And we're actually seeing um, something really interesting. You can see there's Chi and Fluttermane in the back for Andrew's side, which means there's no physical attacker, which means... That's right. Incineroar is Incineroar actually is very, looking very so dangerous good. with that Assault Fest. Yeah, we're seeing kind of the one of the weaknesses of, of loading up on having all one type of attacker, physical or special. Obviously, Andrew does have the Urshifu, but if he doesn't bring it to the battle, there's not that many Pokemon that can hit these bulky Assault Fest Pokemon. Totally, and Chiyu can't protect either. It's a Choice Guard right. variant, so you're just going to get dunked on. Tailwind is going to come out, so I think right now from both ends, you just have to kind of set up that Tailwind, yeah. right? Make sure like, you don't get outsped by the opposing side, so what very straightforward right decision. For? Is it that Discharge it we discharge? were talking about? Uh, it's a full switch. <laughs> I think this is a safer play, right? You can yeah. serve what's called Focus Action. Actually, Aaron, something we didn't mention um, is that by leaving Tornadus alive, uh, Roshan is now exerting Encore oh, pressure. That's right. Tornadus, it, 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 it does have Terra Dark, but Terrapicus is already Terrastalized, so it doesn't have that option. There's no Mental Herb to stop the Encore. So even though, like, Miraidon, yeah, like, it didn't, um, you know, like, like, it doesn't actually, like,
KO both Pokemon. Maybe it doesn't need to. It here. helps, if anything, because now Tornadus is in this awkward spot where it's like, yeah, you're out on the field, but you're facing down Encore. You don't just give Andrew two free switches into Fluttermane and Chiu immediately. Yeah. I, I think a lot of the question I also had is what do we think Rajon's final Pokemon is here? Because I think you could make a good argument for, of course, that Blood Moon Ursa Luna, but you, of course, could also bring that Cornerstone Ogre Pond. Yeah, and, and there the Ogre is. Pond. That is a really good final Pokemon That's in terms really, of offense. really, really nice. Yeah, Chiu, uh, it takes a lot of damage from a super effective uh, 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 Ivy Cudgel and even Fluttermane. I mean, like, Fluttermane, it doesn't have the booster energy anymore, and yeah, like, it's, I think it's possible it could actually take a meaningful bit of damage from the Ivy Cudgel. The critical hit, it would definitely KO, and I think we've seen even some Fluttermane go down without a critical hit, so it feels like Rajon is really in the driver's seat here. Yeah, and so you can see the Icy Wind hover here and the switch into Chiyu. The idea behind this is so that you don't get encore but Rajon could go for something like encore plus the Ivy Cudgel into the Tornado slot. I think that play is relatively safe. Yeah. If you do that, of course, you do end up eating up the Icy Wind, but you still have all of your Pokemon, so maybe you're okay just getting a knockout right That's now. That's right. Yeah, I think that, like, Rajon, because he didn't discharge into his own Whimsicott, Whimsicott's Focus Sash is still intact. Right. And the reason that's relevant is that Rajon, if he plays his cards well, he might be able to set up a second Tailwind and allow Mirai yeah. to yeah, just, fully just, just sweep. If you get completely. another Tailwind up when Tornadus' Tailwind is gone, that's yeah, it, I Yeah, I mean, think. Discharge will end the game on its own, right? Exactly. And also, crucially, Aaron, something you pointed out earlier is that, yes, Fluttermane Moonblast did not KO the Mirai on because, oh, actually, no Encore coming out here. I'll get back to that Mirai on point yep. in a second. And Sinor are coming back in here saying, you know what? I think you're going to switch out. I have an, if you, Even if you don't switch out, Ivy Cudgel into that slot, most likely will pick up a KO and just preserving the fake out pressure for another turn because the Sinor is so safe here. What's it going to do? Take a Moonblast from no item, no boost, Fluttermane. It's not It's not in any real danger here. As Chi Yu switches in, the question is, we know that Fluttermane went for the Icy Wind here. It most likely will move first. The question is, what did the Ogre Pond go for? Oh, Spiky okay. Shield, actually, okay. It's a bit of a surprise, but actually Rajan preserving the Sturdy and stalling out the Tailwind. Critically, crucially. exactly. You were just talking about the point of setting up another Tailwind. Well, this stalls out a turn from both ends, but now yes. Chi Yu is awkwardly stuck on the field. Fake out plus Ivy Cudgel now into Chi Yu feels really safe. What so do you do safe. to get around that, There's right? There's no Ghost Terra because Terrapagos has already used the Terrastalization. Exactly. There's no real way around that. And if you switch into Tornadus to, to you know try and survive, well, then you've lost your Tailwind Center. I mean, your high number situation we talked about becomes a lot more threatening. So I love that play from Rajan. He does not know what the last Pokemon is. It could be Amoongus. It could be Urshifu, and so he says, you know what? I'll get fake out pressure this way. Like, I'm not in any danger. Let me just make a really smart and safe switch. And you can see Andrew reacting here, saying, I, I can't lose Chiyu. It's like my one of my only offensive Pokemon. If I lose Chiyu, I've got Fluttermane with, you know, not that much special attack and yep. Tornadus, who only has a flying move and is clearly very bulky. So, uh, yeah, like, feels pressure to save the Chiyu. But now, if Tornadus goes down this turn, this Tailwind could be, just from Whimsicott. Yeah, like, Tornadus oh. needs to survive oh, here. Oh, my goodness. Incineroar might even be able to take another one. Fluttermane is one of the strongest new Pokemon introduced, but Incineroar doesn't care about the Assault Fest. I think Ivy Cudgel gets the KO onto Tornadus. That's not really a surprise, but that is huge because Rajon has conserved his Whimsicott. So, it is a 4-2 lead for Rajon right now. Andrew, however, does have two really fast Pokemon, but the problem is you have to deal with a potential second Tailwind from that Whimsicott. You've got to deal with Maridon that's waiting in the back as well. Electric Train is slowly going to expire, but Rajon's done such a good job of setting up Maridon as soon after Terrain expires, right? And so I think Rajon has all the pieces right now to win this game. That's right. Rajon said, you dealt with my first wave, but here's number two. <laughs> Spiky Shield comes out. The Spiky Shield U-turn play is completely perfect here. There's no way for it really to get punished because even if Incineroar were to faint here, which, you know, is is a possibility, right? It doesn't really matter because then you get a free switch into Whimsicott as the Tailwind expires. Tailwind, Ivy Cudgel, and Chiyu, Chiyu is that's completely it. safe. And the game's you just see over. The ice wind, I don't think, I think this is not going to KO, but I really, there's yeah, no way. <laughs> yeah, uh, Rajon has just managed his resources exquisitely. Perfectly, actually, honestly. Oh my goodness. Yeah, absolutely. Something really interesting is that Rajan has basically two focus ashes with the focus ash on Whimsicott and actually the sturdy on his Ogre Pond. Yep. So he has two Pokemon that each need to take two attacks to get KO'd. And yeah, just extinct, like with so much, like he doesn't have that many defensive switches, but he has so many Pokemon that need to take like multiple attacks and center or ogre on Whimsicott that he was able to really control the speed of the battle at the pace that he wanted to go. I just love watching this. Like, Tailwind just peters out, so Whimsicott comes out just at the right time. I mean, at this point, like, Maridon maybe isn't even necessary to win the game, so. but you just go for Tailwind, you go for Ivy Cudgel into Chiyu. There's no way Fluttermane's going to be able yeah. to pull it off. And so Andrew recognizes that. To me, this game just started off with turn one. The fact that Terrapagos ate up like 60% of its health and did no damage, yes. you, you can't let that happen again. And I think Urshifu, or sorry, Amoongus not coming out from Andrew's 
and punish it a lot because he had no defensive switch in on turn That's one. That's right. There's no the only Pokemon on this team who really feels even remotely comfortable taking a Volt Switch, let alone could possibly survive one, is that Amoongus. Yeah. And I really like Rajon's decision to say, hey, like this Flutter Man, I could tear and Volt Switch it, but I think I'd rather get the damage on Terrapagos because once your restricted Pokemon takes a ton of damage, it just becomes so threatening. And also using Incineroar to position, we're seeing the value out of having a Pokemon that can switch after your opponents have already moved. Whimsicott, uh, Miraidon with Terra, Ogre Pond. These Pokemon don't want to take Choice Specs, Terra Stellar, Terra Star Storm, but with Incineroar, they don't have to. Incineroar can take that damage and then switch. And so it was just such an, uh, an effective strategy, I think, and I'm not surprised to see Rajon taking game one here. Yeah, I think, like, one of the things we were talking about before this game started and before we started casting was you know, Amoongus. Amoongus feels really weird to bring into a matchup when your opponent has Miraidon, but you have that Terrapagos to get rid of Electric Terrain for one pivotal turn. So yes. if you're able to do that and land a key Spore, that could be huge. What you obviously then have to worry about is, let's say Miraidon's out on the field, you get rid of the Terrain, but then Volt Switch comes out, Amoongus pivots in, and then suddenly, or o Ogre Pond, right? Yeah. I think the fact that there's Whimsicott and Ogre Pond, two things that are just naturally immune to Spore, is a really big deal in this matchup. And Incineroar also looked amazing in that game. I mean, it Incineroar soaked so up good. so many hits and was able to apply so much pressure. I mean, what you're talking about is you're saying like, hey, I feel like Andrew needs Amoongus to deal with the Miraidon, but you're also saying, hey, hey, I think he kind of needs Urshifu to deal with the Incineroar. Right. And that's two Pokemon that didn't come to the battle. And I mean, Fluttermane was good. I, I, like, I feel like Chiyu didn't, I mean, it wasn't really given the opportunity to do much, but like, if you start bringing Amoongus, Fluttermane, Tornadus, like, Terrapagos, you can quickly run into a position where if anything happens to Terrapagos, your damage output is so limited. Fluttermane with no, like, it's not trained to be offensive, it's trained to be support. Tornadus trained to be support. Amoongus trained to be support. And a lead switch up from Rajon switching to Whimsicott and be right on. And this time Amoongus has hit the field, so the Amoongus here does two things, right? First of all, if you are able to go for the Terra Star Storm, or go for the Terra, get rid of the terrain, then you can spore, for example, right now into the Maridon slot. But Maridon could just Volt Switch and go out into that Cornerstone Ogre Pond that's in the back. And so, yeah. oh, here we, here Andrew we go. Andrew walking in quickly. Andrew, Th this could be your tournament this is life it. on the line. This is huge. Take some time. Think about your moves. Like, this could be it. Maybe maybe you have the feeling. Maybe you say, I know that this is going to work. Okay, and I, I like, think he heard you. I, okay. yeah, he's taking yeah. it a little bit slower now. Okay, okay. Thinking about the move a little bit more, taking a second to lock in, that's important. These players, th this is their dream. They came here and they said, I want to win this tournament. So many players came in hoping, wanting, praying to win the tournament, and this could be the moment. Andrew is still in this. He's down a game, yes, but it's not over. Interesting. Terrapagos terrestrializes first. No terrestrialization from Miraidon. A different tact from Raj on this game. Okay, so this is going to get rid of the electric train for one turn, and of course Miraidon will be able to potentially Volt Switch and then bring it back in. But critically, there's no sport coming out here anyway. I expect Volt Switch. Ooh, Whoa, okay, Whimsicott protect. protects. I was going to say Volt Switch here and then go out into Ogre Pond seems relatively safe, which would cover for Spore. That's exactly what we're seeing here. And that's still oh so much damage, but this time there is that Pollen Pop coming out. That's right, that's right. The, the crucial thing last turn, last game, was that... Uh, I'm totally blanking. Terrapagos <laughs> took too much damage. Ogre Pond switches in. Rajan does not know that Andrew went for the Spore, and he almost did go for the Spore. So he brings in the uh, the Ogre Pond, saying, I can't let a Pokemon fall asleep here. Terrastar Storm is going to do a ton of damage and will break the Sturdy on the Ogre Pond. And Amoongus, if it had gone for Spore, this game would be extremely, extremely, oh extremely my bad. <laughs> Just a lot of damage. But Pollen Puff keeps the Terrapagos' health high, and all of a sudden, Andrew is in the lead. I love that self Pollen Puff. I think it's, you know, it feels so tempting to go for that Spore, but you know, you saw Ogre Pond in game one, so it's so likely that's going to be in the back. There's no way Rajan just lets you get that Spore off, and so really great decision making to end up going for that Pollen Pop. The problem for Andrew in that first game was that Terrapagos just ate up so much damage, and then was just kind of one hit away from getting knocked out, essentially. Now, you're applying a lot of pressure. That Star Storm will get the knockout onto Ogre Pond. You could just Pollen Pop into Whimsicott here as well, and so what does Rajan do right now? I think he... <laughs> I think he Terra rocks Ivy Cudgel and Moonblast, Moonblast into the yeah. into the, the thing, the uh, the Terrapagos. It could be a mistake, but you're not going to Rage Powder in front of two Grass-type Pokemon, that's right. right? The thing is, that's that's the question for Rajon, right? We as casters, we have the the, the uh, very nice advantage of we're not under the same pressure as these players. As Whimsicott goes for Tailwind, it looks like Rajon wants to go for an Ivy Cudgel into the... Looks like the Amoongus, Amoongus actually. Slot, yeah. Interesting. Okay, so a good bit of damage on the Amoongus here. That might be Terra Electric Discharge range. And because Terrapagos is already Terrastalized, the advantage of that for Rajon is that there's no other clear way to override electric training anymore. There's no really on this team. Um, Aaron, where did Whimsicott go? Where did uh, it, Ogapon go? It's about to go back in its Pokeball, and we're going to see the final two Pokemon. We know Maridon's one of them. So. Oh, man, what a play. I this think is so different from game one. I love it. What a finals we're watching right now. And it all hinged on that turn one. If that had been Spore, this game, I legitimately think would be over. Yeah. I think if it had been Spore, it'd be over upon Switch. Because you double off onto the Moonblast. I'd cut you. There's no risk. Exactly. Like, you switch it, anything switched in would get KO'd because Amoongus is the only Pokemon that can switch into that double up, I think. 
Um, Mirai comes back out. We already knew this. Is it Blood Moon or Saluna, or is it Incineroar? What did Rajon switch to? Oh, it is it's Incineroar. Incineroar. Okay. So that means that there is no ability to go for that discharge here. Unless, well, I shouldn't say no ability. <laughs> it's just not an ability that I would. Saw that Incineroar. Yeah. How much do you think that takes a discharge? No, I, can take a dis I can take a discharge, but I probably can't take multiple. Um, we have a full HP Terrapagos here. We have Amoongus still very healthy. This game is not over. We have seen what Miraidon can do, but Rajon probably has to end this game before the Tailwind expires, or I think that there's going to be a lot of trouble in Miraidon land. Yeah, I think this turn is really key to pay attention to. It's just like, what does Andrew do to respond, right? Because yes. like Rajon has gotten the setup that he's wanted. You got in the Tailwind up, you got in Miraidon out. I think Miraidon in an end game when you don't know exactly what's in the back can be a little bit spooky, but the upside for it is like just really strong electric type attacks are so consistent to go for. And yes. so, uh, yeah, I think right now for Andrew, you're looking to just make sure you don't lose too many resources too quickly. And so yeah. protecting is one way to start with this, but looks like he's considering going for a Pollen Puff as well. Uh, protect to protect makes sense. Yeah, this yeah. is also a bait because if Rajon decides to go for a Terra, Terra here, yep. then Miraidon will no longer be able to survive the Terra Star Storm. So Rajon has fake up pressure only available on this turn. Here's the booster energy. Did Miraidon on Terra? This is the first trap. If Rajon fails it, he will most likely lose the game. Let's see what happened here. There's no, no Terra, no Terra. No but Terra, who okay. This is important. He probably needs to take a KO this turn. Fake, Fake out into out. the Amoongus. Okay. I feel like it has to. Oh no, to the Flutterman. Flutterman. I'm sorry. Yep. Is it Electro Drift? It's Electro Drift. Oh, but it goes into Amoongus. Ah, that's that might be a problem, Aaron. I think so because right, your another turn of Tailwind now gets stalled out for nothing. You can protect Fluttermane now, even sacrifice Amoongus, then bring out Tornadus, for example, yeah. instead of Tailwind. And so, uh, it, yeah, I mean. To your point, there was at least no Terra from a ride on, so it's not like you get baited into it, but uh, yeah, like you're really looking to just stall out the opposing speed control. There's two turns of Tailwind left right now, so the question is, can Rajon make enough out of these two turns? He's still applying a lot of offensive pressure right now. We're actually just seeing the icy wind hover here. Okay. Yeah, interesting. You, I feel like you just rage you powder. Have such okay. a big lead that you probably can throw this around. The question is, how do Moridon and... Um, like, it's, it's a little bit tricky because Miraidon here, if it takes an Icy Wind, then it's probably slower than the Fluttermane, but yep. it's still probably faster than Terrapagos. Rajon's got to make a lot to think about this turn. The other question is, how offensive is this Incineroar? And can it potentially pick up a KO? Rajon is deciding to lock in his Terra. He says, you know what? It's now or never. Turns off his weakness to Ice, turns off his weakness to Fairy, gets a damage boost, but... I mean, unless Icy Wind misses, he's going to be very vulnerable in the next turn to this Terrapagos, especially with, we saw Tornadus oh. being able to Tailwind is still still available on the other side. Yeah. Rage Powder is going to come out, and so Electro Drift should get the knockout onto that. You Inst think so? Yeah, I do. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe just barely. barely. Yeah. <laughs> it is a resisted hit. <laughs> There is no true resistance against Miraidon is what I learned <laughs> after this weekend, and it is going to demolish that Amoongus. Amoongus is going to faint, but I think it's done kind of what it was aiming for. Critical hit. <laughs> Maybe a little overkill. Amoongus might need two trips to the Pokemon Center to recover from that one. <laughs> Amoongus going down here. The question is, will Icy Wind connect? It is 95% accurate. That is not a guaranteed Pokemon. It does connect on both. So the speed modifiers are getting a little bit wonky here, folks. Miraidon yep. is at minus one speed, which is two-thirds of its original speed stat, but it's still, still got one turn of speed, tailwind, so that's it's right. four-thirds, I think, of its Flare original Blitz speed stat. comes out, and it does not, not knock enough. out Fluttermane. Not super surprising, especially with these speed booster flutters, but uh, this now gives you another turn. You can bring out that Tornadus. You can even protect the Fluttermane, set up Tailwind, then yeah. get the Terrapagos out, and with Terrapagos <laughs> still being relatively healthy, this is going to be really tough for Rajon, I think, because all you're looking to do is just get Terrapagos back in and then Terra Star Storm once again. Yeah, the only question is, let's say that this turn, let's say that somehow Mirai and Incineroar we're able to take out Tornadus and Fluttermane in the same turn, and yeah. the board state stayed relatively even. Could Incineroar possibly, with the Assault Vest, with Knock Off, could it, is it possible that it beats the Terrapagos? One on 1v1 the Terrapagos? I don't think so. But you know what? I've learned not to doubt Incineroar. It's another Pokemon I've, I've learned never to to count out. So I was going to say, like, in this position, you intentionally double up onto Fluttermane, Flutter exactly, yeah. so you don't give the free switching. Because if you give the free switch into Terrapagos, Tailwind is set up, Terra Star Storm comes out. It's over. That's over. Yeah. yeah. So Rajon has the awareness for that. Here's the protection of the Fluttermane. Let's see what Rajan went for. I, I do agree that I think that if Rajan goes for the Electro Drift into the Tornadus, this game is it's most immediately likely over. over. I like, think so. I, I think so as well. So actually, Rajan wants to not take a KO this turn. Yeah. Good job. The not Electro Drift the KO. into the Flutter main. There it is. It's still going to be so difficult, but Rajan has kept himself in this game a little bit. Let's see here. Knock off oh, as well. Okay. That makes sense. Like, oh, a critical hit. It probably doesn't matter, folks. I'm almost wondering. I was like, oh, could he side knock off? But it doesn't help with the speed issue, right? That's yep. the end of the Tailwind from 
um, from uh, Andrew's side, and we see the value here in speed control. Just like you called out, Aaron, you said this battle will be determined by speed. This battle is being determined by which Pokemon moves first, and Andrew decided to put all his eggs in the Jurassicos basket, bringing basically three support Pokemon, and it's paying off in a major way. Oh, like, so much damage. And Aaron, I don't think that Sarah's going to be able to, to do this one on its yeah, own. Yeah, oh, speed drop to add. It should be a double knockout this turn, but then Terrapicos comes out and just clicks that Terra Star Storm. I love the adjustment to Amoongus. We were talking about using it mainly for that Spore, but actually just one single Pollen Pop on turn one alone was huge. Yeah. We're going to see the Fluttermane finally faint here, but yeah, I think it's more than happy with what it's accomplished in this one. Fluttermane did his job. That Icy Wind was important. The, the stalling of the tail was important. Knockoff comes out. I actually don't think hey, it's going to pick up KO. KO. Ooh, yeah, yeah four barely HP. hangs in there. To be honest, even if it had KO'd, Terrapagos just Terrapagos, anyway, like yeah. you have full HP Terrapagos. And the reason why that full HP is so important is because it means that Incineroar can never kind of 1v1 here, even if the circumstances have been a little different. Like that Pollen Puff turn one, that was the play that, that I think ultimately decided it. And it feels like Aaron, both these games have kind of been decided by a, a, a how turn one Went. Yes, yes. I, this, I, I feel like the watching with this Maridon composition play out, it's like the decision making between what, behind what you do with Maridon on turn one is so key. If you get it right, you just blow up the yeah. game and get such a big lead. But if you get it incorrectly, you can lose a lot of momentum because Pokemon like Incineroar and Whimsicott can deal a lot of damage in certain scenarios, but it's not like they can just threaten everything on the field, right? That's and exactly often right. Maridon is Volt switching out in order to go to something else. I also wonder how differently this game would have looked if there was a Blood Moon exactly. or Moon in the back. Incineroar. It feels a little bit surprising to leave it behind, but it was an option if Raja knew that he was going to kind of be forced to play in the Tailwind or Bust kind of mode. But Aaron, we are going to game three. This After that so game one, it was so dominant. I thought, well, <clears> you know, maybe Maridon just beats Terrapicos. And now after game two, I'm thinking, well, you know, I feel like Terrapicos might actually be pretty good against Maridon. These players have got to feel so incredibly nervous. They are under so much pressure. It's one thing to start the set and say, hey, you know, I can afford to lose one game. Neither player can afford to lose a game anymore. Both players have their dreams on the line. They have their their hopes, everything that they've worked towards, the thing that they have been chasing this whole weekend. And it all comes down to this, this moment, 20 minutes or less, will decide the winner of the Indianapolis Regional Championships. Each of these players' first regional victory and the first tournament of Regulation G. And there are so many mind games. What are the lead adjustments? Do you consider if you're on Rajon's end bringing that Blood Moon Ursa Luna instead? What's also been interesting is kind of the lack of the early speed control, right? It's, That's right. For example, in game one, like uh, no Tornadus, no Whimsicott being led. And so and there's some adjustments here, for example, like you could just go with uh, Whimsicott plus your uh, Maridon. You could go with Tornadus plus the Terrapagos and just exert a lot of pressure immediately. And so there's a lot of different things to consider here. Amoongus felt like a really key adjustment in that last game. And so I wouldn't be surprised to see it come back because that single Pollen Puff actually changed, changed the game everything. completely. I, I could not agree more. As you said, Rajon needs to get the, the positioning right with his Volt Switch Miraidon. He needs to take the KOs he needs. He needs to do the damage. He needs to switch into the right Pokemon at the right times. And that Amoongus offsetting that first initial Volt Switch changed everything. So we are getting ready to jump into game three here. This is it, folks. This is the game that will determine who wins the tournament. Rajon going back to what he used game one, instant Miraidon, and a new lead out of Andrew, Tornadus, and Terrapagos. Oh, the Terrapagos slot right now was once again exposed to the combination of Fake Out, out. plus Electric Terra and Volt Switch for example. I saw I wonder, I mean, like, do you just eat up that damage again? Because that feels so bad. It's so scary, Aaron, because let's say you are like, oh, Terrapagos, I can't risk it. Switch out into a Moongus. Tornadus takes a Volt Switch. That's your speed control. That's it. And that was how Andrew won the last game. So Andrew locking in so quickly. He knows what he wants to do. He feels it in his heart. He feels what he, that, that he knows what is best. But Rajon taking his time. Will Rajon get this call correct? This turn could determine who has such an, like, like a huge advantage going on to the rest of this game. Yeah, I think I give Rajon the advantage right now, honestly, because yes. the Terrapagos is so exposed, right? And so, yeah, the question is whether or not, like, you know, Rajon doesn't really have a reason to click fake out onto the Tornadus. Oh, There's that Cobra close. So the Terrapagos is going to switch out. We know it's a Moongus coming out, but this means no offensive pressure from Andrew's end this turn. No Terra, fake out into a Moongus. Gonna take a little Rocky Helmet chip here. What is Tornadus going for? It's most likely the Tailwind. It is the Tailwind, so that's four turns of Tailwind on Andrew's side, but what will he give up in exchange? There it's the Volt it Switch, the the Switch into Tornadus. And so that's an immediate knockout. And of course, that first turn of Tailwind, you don't really get anything out of it. And so a quick knockout here. This also means oh, that you can man. pivot back out into that Whimsicott and now protect one turn, stagger Tailwind by two turns, and then suddenly yes. you have so many extra turns of Tailwind to work with. And so I personally expect a Whimsicott to switch that's in here. Right. There it is. Good call, Aaron. And we haven't even talked about how this Incineroar is still a massive threat. Yeah. It's already done a good job of crushing the Terrapagos. And something we haven't seen just yet is using not 
Shock off to remove the Choice Specs to remove the real damage from the Terrapicos. Terrapicos is strong, but it really wants some kind of a boost before it starts doing massive damage. And so here it's pretty risky. The other thing, though, that we have to consider is that this could be Terrastalize, Terrapicos, and Spore the Incineroar. Yes. That would be, I don't know, I'm like thinking about it and I feel like Andrew's honestly pretty far behind in this game right yeah. now, so I feel like maybe you need to make a big play, especially because this is the Assault Vest on the Incineroar, so I would not expect Terra Star Storm to get the knockout right yeah. now. And so, I don't know, I, I do feel like Andrew is pretty far behind after that turn one. It's so important to pay attention to when the Terra comes out here, because removing that terrain just for one turn can have a huge, huge payoff. We're seeing Andrew considering a bunch of different options. He's gonna offer Rage Powder and Terra Star Storm. So we'll see. I mean, like, here I would expect maybe Protect and Knock Off. Maybe yeah, Protect so Flare too. Blitz, but I think Protect is really safe. You don't want to faint to Terra Star Storm plus uh, potential Pollen Pop. And what this allows you to do is now have multiple extra turns of Tailwind in this end game. Absolutely. It was a little bit risky from Raja, but saying, hey, you know, even if you do Terrastalize, like, that at least makes it so we ride on can be a bit, like, a bit stronger later. I don't have to worry about my Retrain being removed. There's and on redirecting the, the attack there, that actually could end up playing a role because Electro Drift, despite being a special move, actually makes contact, therefore activating the Rocky Helmet. But the thing here, Aaron, is that you uh, you burn another turn of Tailwind, and if you want, you can actually Encore the Whimsicott and say, hey, I'm going to make it so you can't protect next turn, and I'm going to make it so that you can't KO my Whimsicott this turn. I think it's an Encore the Whimsicott. Encore the Amoongus, <laughs> yeah. excuse me, to prevent, to, to ensure that your Whimsicott's Focus Sash remains intact. Yes. So you actually have a couple of options here, and I think that... Yeah, which one Rajan decides to go for could really, really be important. His Incineroar has taken a ton of damage, but Andrew this time actually saving the Terra, not wanting to use it preemptively, not wanting to give up that Terra shell or the ability to override the terrain. Yeah, that's really important because that's your one big chance in this game, right? And so uh, I think if you commit to it too early and then the Maridon just comes back in, that's it. No more potential for Spore for you. It yes. so, makes a lot of sense. Also, of course, you get that single target damage. Oh. Incineroar is actually going to be over pivot right? out. Yeah. That yeah, is, is Ogre okay. Pond. Interesting. Okay. Ogre Pond switching in. And actually, we didn't see Andrew Terra. An amazing play. And the Encore from uh, the Whimsicott. That's amazing, Aaron. Not only does he switch uh, Ogre Pond into a resisted hit because uh, this is a normal move until Terrathicos drastalizes, he's Encored Amoongus into a move that can't work against his two grass type Pokemon. That's right. And so Amoongus now is completely useless. You call the Encore potential earlier. Now Amoongus is in such a bad spot. But what do you do? Are you really going to switch it out into your final Pokemon? It's so risky. I'm not sure you can, but, and, and do, you, do you use your Terra now? Looks like the answer might be yes, you do, but also, Aaron, this is the final turn of Tailwind, and Whimsicott has zero, zero. ways to go down, yep. except if Rajon side targets, but <laughs> probably won't be doing that. That means that Rajon will not only be able to match the Tailwind, he'll be able to overwrite it, basically, with his own. He's got such a huge advantage in the speed of the battle, but he needs to find a way through this uh, through this Amoongus so that Miraidon can do the damage that it needs. Yeah, I'm wondering, in this position, like, you're not at risk of getting knocked out, so no need to set up Tailwind with Whimsicott yet. You yeah. could, theoretically, like, Moonblast and, plus uh, Ivy Cudgel into the Amoongus spot. And I think that probably just knocks out Fluttermane, right? Yeah, probably. So Amoongus is going to switch out here. It's going to activate that Regenerator ability. It's possible it can take a powerful electric move later. Fluttermane switching in. This is another option for speed control, but it won't outspeed me right on in Tailwind, so it's only, you know, somewhat there. Let's see what happens this turn. We are probably, I think we saw, seeing the terrestrialization from the Terrapagos. Andrew waited so long, he conserved it so well, but now he feels like he needs it. He needs the spread damage. He can no longer wait to overwrite the electric terrain. He needs to go for this now, and frankly, I agree. I think this is his only way back into the battle. And for me, the question is, will Ogre Pond go down to this Terra Star Storm? Yeah, let's see. I mean, it did so much damage that first time around. There's also so... the option for a Moonblast drop, I realize. Yep. Okay, here we go. Oh, Terra Star Storm is just going to come out immediately. Does it knock out the Ogre Pond? We didn't see Tailwind come out here. Could have been Tailwind Ivy Cut. Joe Ogre Pond will oh, faint. Oh, man. That's a huge knockout. The Ogre Pond goes down. What does Whimsicott go for? It's Moonblast. We know for sure. It's Moonblast into the Terrapagos. How much is it going to do? Not a lot. Not a lot, but that probably that definitely puts it in a range of a Miraidon move as the Tailwind ends. So, oh, Aaron, we're so close to the end of this battle. The question is just... How much damage is Miraidon able to do? Uh, Rajon is betting it all on Miraidon. He can go for Tailwind and Electro Drift into either Pokemon, picking up a KO. If he commits a Terrastalization, he'll most likely get the Amoongus that's switched in as well. But if he goes after the Terrapagos and Amoongus switches in, and then Icy, icy Wind, from wind from then he might lose the speed advantage. Yes. And so that's something he has to consider. He can also go for Discharge, but the question is, even with Terra Electric, will it KO the um, the, the Terrapagos? It's unclear. I don't know the calcs there. There's so much going on here. Does he want to commit Terra? Does he not want to commit Terra? He knows he takes one Moonblast. <laughs> Aaron, there's so much going on here. There's so much, and it. I think this turn alone feels so, so critical right now, right? So you can see the option considering pivoting out into Amoongus and then targeting the Fluttermane. There is the option right now to just straight up go for Tailwind. 
I was, I mean, I was wondering, like, is Discharge ever a possibility here? I think maybe Terrapico switches out. If Rajan locks into Terra uh, Electric Discharge and Tailwind, he will win this game. Because he'll be able to go into Incineroar, fake up before his own Discharge, yeah. and clean up the game with it. Here's the Terrastalization from Rajan. This is the last player to use it. He saved it to the end of the game. The only question is, what, what is it did he going go for? for? Did it target the Amoongus? Because if it did, an icy wind comes out. This could get really scary really fast. Is it Electro Drift? Is it Discharge? Is it Volt Switch? Is it Tailwind? First, we do see the Tailwind from Women's Account. Rajan now has four turns with this speed advantage. But what move does he go for? Oh, it's gonna be Volt, Volt Switch. Switch! Okay, but into who? Is it into Fluttermane? Amoongus. Oh, it's into Amoongus! Okay, that's a lot not of damage. Enough, not enough damage, though. Ooh. You're right on going back here. What did Fluttermane go for? It'll be able to pick up a KO on the Whimsicott for sure. The Incineroar's low HP, so a Moonblast will get that, too. Incineroar comes out. This is so close. Oh, I man. believe we saw the Icy Wind lock in from the Fluttermane. Let's just double check and make sure. Intimidate, not relevant right now. Oh, Moon it was a Moonblast, actually. I also thought yeah. it was Icy Wind. Incineroar goes down here. That's the end of Incineroar. But the question is, is Miraidon going to be enough to close out this game? Now that it's terrestrialized, it's weak to Terra Star Storm. I think you might have to discharge, right? I think you might have to. Otherwise, Fluttermane goes down, and then, yeah, it's actually Rajon's only option, I think. You like I, I you could protect Whimsicott because like you're gonna survive a Moonblast. You eat up an icy wind. Yeah. You electro, but the thing is, if he protects a Moonblast Moon and you yes. electro drift, then you have to take a second icy wind the next turn. I think you need to discharge this turn. I don't see another way forward. And discharge, it just depends on how strong it is. I, I have no idea. It's I'm the weakest of Miraidon's moves, it, like just just by virtue of the base power and the spread damage. But that doesn't mean that it's weak by any means. Oh, this is so close. Both players fighting for their tournament life right now. Right on has to lock into its final move here. Once you commit that move, you cannot switch. So you can see oh the rage God. powder here. That does not cover for the discharge option. <gasps> if Aaron, if he doesn't protect Whimsicott, no! Whoa, Whimsicott protects! He protected! Oh my goodness. If he discharged, he could have won the game without it, but. Rage Power comes out redirecting any moves that uh, that Mirado might want to go for. Is it discharge? Is it discharge? Is it discharge? It's it is discharge. discharge! If, oh my goodness, Aaron's, uh, Rajon's Whimsicott might be the key that keeps him from winning this battle. The thing is that when Discharge hits multiple targets, it is weaker. It should KO both Pokemon oh. this turn, oh. but the problem is that Rajon's own Whimsicott is reducing the damage the, of his Discharge. Yes, will the Terrapagos be able to survive? I think so. It could be the difference maker. We saw how much Voltswitch did with no terrain. Oh, this is unbelievable. Oh man, Rajon could still win with a double protect, but if he just let Whimsicott go down there, he would have been in an amazing position. Andrew, it all comes down to if he can kill both KO both Pokemon this turn. Rajon's thinking about it. He, goes the gets the he, gets it. he gets it! He gets it! Oh my god, Miraidon has the speed advantage. How much is Discharge gonna do? Oh. Electric Rain boosted, oh, oh, oh. Hadron Engine boosted, Terra Electric boosted, Choice Bex boosted, Discharge mm. is it enough damage! It is! I didn't even need the double protect, but Rhydon claims its first championship in Regulation G. Rajon Ball, he's made it to top eight. He's made it to top four. He's made it to the...